So here we are once again. For the eighth year in a row, I am here to make a plea to you as to why you should incorporate MySpace into your everyday life as I have for the past 12 years of my life. This year in particular is the most difficult because of the fact that by this point I've said everything I've had to get off my chest. I went from introducing myself as to why I've devoted countless hours to MySpace to debating over the 2013 redesign to taking Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech and a number of other historical and fairly recent speeches and rewording them in the hope to prove a point of how historical context applies to the degradation that society has placed on MySpace and the optimistic feeling I get seven days a week that the shared perspective society has for MySpace will turn 180 degrees into a more positive outlook. I've even used the candid words of Instagram videos posted by MySpace co-founder Tom Anderson and gave them an even greater elaboration to describe his former passion and my current passion to put MySpace in a position to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. But Last year, I took a different approach. Instead of speaking in generalities, I took aim and fired my shot, specifically at critics who view MySpace as a load of bullshit. I don't care who I have to debate or disprove in order to make my point crystal clear. As of November 2019, MySpace.com is still up and running. It's the very first website I access every time I open my internet browser. I mean, hell, I even have it bookmarked on the taskbar of my Windows PC as well as having it as a desktop shortcut. I am every bit as motivated and enthusiastic to interact with what the website has to offer now as I have been for the last decade plus and regardless of how you look at yourself in the mirror or how anyone who views you in your personal or professional life if you are one of these people that turns a blind eye to the myspace brand to feed this false narrative that's been around for years then you're just as ignorant as they are flat out ignorant but, as I dig through the weeds of negativity, I've been flattered to find legitimacy towards this outspoken MySpace advocation through uplifting remarks towards my effort in these videos. There's only a few, but it's the thought that counts. So, I've decided to do the opposite of my previous video and highlight three elite people out there to give my humbling response towards this pie in the sky dream that I'm trying to accomplish. I'm no celebrity figure, but I can only hope that my acknowledgement of approval actually means something to all of you. Believe it or not, Mr. Bobby Sanders contacted me via MySpace. He is a proud serving member of the United States Navy, currently based in Kanagawa, Japan, near Tokyo. First and foremost, the man should be thanked for his service. And on top of that, I thank him for sharing his fondness for what the MySpace brand represents. The fact that my social media justice warrior video persuaded him to log back on MySpace for the first time in a long time is exactly what my intentions are for anyone who has watched 
the yearly videos I've uploaded here to YouTube since 2012. For years, I've heard from many people that persistency is the key to getting noticed and it definitely paid off in this case. I do agree that the simplicity of not just MySpace but the majority of websites up to the mid 2000s had that ease of access that made the user experience feel a lot more convenient. We definitely took that time period for granted. Nowadays, with advancements in technology, the user interfaces of many websites are very elaborate. It's assumed that people will find it more preferable, but that's often not the case. The unexplored frontier example that he used is what still fuels me to want to consistently connect with MySpace users in this year of 2019 and beyond. All over the world, regardless of their current occupation or what they plan to do in the future. I hope your fellow members of the armed forces follow your lead as well as use MySpace as a communicative platform to get in touch with their loved ones back home. Gabe Lumpkin also reached out to me on MySpace. He sent me a pair of short and sweet messages. My active presence on MySpace was enough for he and his buddy Daniel to rejoin MySpace. This is once again an example of the goal I am trying to reach. Even though I respectfully disagree with the assumptions that there are only a few active MySpace users besides myself, I understand and welcome the sentiment that Gabe presented me with, especially with the fact that he ended his message with happy spacing. I've never thought to use that phrase before, but I might start to use it more frequently from now on. Thanks a lot, Gabe. The third and final comment came from YouTube user Sisoba. This person has no idea who I am on a personal level and yet publicly posted one comment that perfectly puts the social media justice warrior video in perspective. Advocating for MySpace against all odds and persevering through the constant humiliation that the website has been dealt with has been a passion of mine for eight years and I'm glad to discover you've recognized my undying will in that one single video. And you're damn right about me being most definitely happy to call myself a MySpacer. Every week or every other week since mid-2007 I've successfully logged into my MySpace account. Through all the interface changes, leadership changes, and cultural changes, I wear the heart and soul of MySpace on my sleeve and will continue doing so going into the 2020s. So, in conclusion, I apologize for this video not being as long as I'd like it to be. Like I said earlier, I'm basically running out of things to talk about. I wish I could have a conversation about this subject on a much, much bigger platform than recording a video with an outdated point and shoot camera in the bedroom of my low rent apartment. But these are the cards I've been dealt with. If nothing changes or affects my life by this time next year, then I'll most likely be clueless as to what content I want to produce next time. But whatever happens, just know this. There is no greater pride 
that I have in my life right now than to be synonymous with MySpace. Like the first two people I mentioned in this video, I am open to any and all interactions via a direct message through my MySpace account. I accept all positive comments and disavow the negative ones. If I am fortunate enough to be given the opportunity, just know that I am very much ready to make myself known on a major scale throughout the next decade by someone, anyone out there who is offering that chance for me to open that door. So for the one man production team that is this video, this is Ray. Mr. Freshelmania Maldonado signing off. Happy spacing and Godspeed.